Hey quad bros, what is up guys? Welcome back. We got the dev Q&A has been released. Also, I put out my video 10 minutes ago. And God knows the YouTube algorithm will not allow me to put out two videos in one day. So we're releasing this the day after the Q&A. Uh, it's currently Friday, as you guys can see down here. Uh, but that's life. That's life. What are you going to do? Um, so uh, I think they updated, they adjusted the plans a little bit here. So you guys might remember this is like the roadmap. They added a couple things. I guess that's what this purple is. They didn't actually say that, but I'm assuming, you know, UI. Um, so customization improvements, they want to rebalance customization prices good i don't know how i've been talking about this for two years and they're just now getting to this that's crazy um but thank god they're finally doing it uh and ability to change soldier voices great changes improvements to the writer class i actually don't think that needs to happen well it depends what improvements mean you know what i want for writer class give me writer class two driving uh, a four-man squad driving a jeep with a 50 cal in the back that's what i want that's what I want, dude. I think that would be so fucking cool and would be such a natural progression of the rider class. Give. Give it to me. It would be sick. All right. Gameplay changes. Nerfs to AT... Sorry. Changes to anti-personal minds. Um, the only reason I don't like this is because it doesn't say removing anti-personal minds from the game. Or personnel. Sorry. Uh, I, they need to be nerfed. They can make some changes. I understand they don't want to actually destroy them. Um, like, I want... That's okay. Uh, it's good to hear that all of these four changes, top tier, good stuff. Uh, rebalance the customization prices, I think would be a fantastic thing to do. I think that's good for both the player base and for the developers to make more money and give better customization options. This is sometimes we have it, it's just kind of, um, it's not there. It's not up to snuff. You know, what can you say? I'm glad they're taking a look at that. Okie dokie. Uh, let's look at the actual Q&A now. Uh, will you rework animations, especially the running animations with various weapons, particularly pistols? And they said, yes, we're already working on them. Uh, I will mention to you guys, as far as I'm aware, Darkflow doesn't do in-house animations. I could be wrong about this, but I know that at least a lot of their artwork is done third party, which is very common in the games industry. I don't think that they have a uh, large enough team to have tons of, like they might have some animators or like some internal artists and stuff like that. And they definitely have like technical artists for like shading and cloud work and stuff like that. But I'm not sure how many like straight 3D animators they have. So keep in mind stuff like this does take quite a while. Um, and also this stuff, the 3D animation and 3D modeling and stuff is far and away the most time consuming part of game development for, for most games. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, you mentioned considering the possibility of letting players change the amount of shells and tanks as well as the belts and payloads of air aircraft. Did you forget? That's a funny ending of that. Uh, we did not forget. We see that players are requesting this feature. Implementing payloads is very complex and extensive. Uh, the Implementing payloads, I agree with. Shells seems weird. Um, but that's fine. They said it's not a priority, but we may tackle it in the future. Good. I think that's a perfect answer. You know, you can't, you can't do everything. Um, they, you know, they acknowledged it and they're moving on. Cool. I like that. Uh, do you plan to expand the number of servers? Create, uh, for example, creating dedicated ones for Asian Oceania? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Um, the other thing with this guy, they also they said bow keeping in mind. Good. Great, great communication. Um, another thing to mention with this guy is like Asia. I know this sucks, but Asian and Oceania servers are like ungodly expensive. I remember seeing a developer talk about it. I can't remember who it was. Um I want to say maybe it was high res with smite but i could be totally botching that but i remember them saying that like asian servers are like three times as expensive uh as like north american servers to like keep running just because of like the distance and things like that um and just it, it's not as like, like the infrastructure isn't as solid as it is in like north america and europe so keep that in mind as well but i mean yeah they're keeping in mind are there plans to limit players who don't play infantry and constantly stay in tanks in the gray zone or fly planes uh they want to avoid restrictions i agree with that we hope to solve the problem through other means, such as altering maps, introducing new mechanics, and improving old ones that will help players counter vehicles in the gray zone and aircraft. I I agree. I think that's a fine answer. Um, we'll see if they talk about, like, suicide plane cycling. I do think plane cycling is a problem. I think tank tanks are a lot less of a problem. I do think... I will say... God, I might get crucified for this. I will say that I, I personally think that gray zoning is a problem and enlisted and i've talked about this in videos however i also think that gray zoning is a wildly blown out of proportion problem and enlisted. i think people 
think gray zoning is a lot bigger of a deal than it is. And I don't think that gray zoning has a significant impact on very many games, uh, on the outcome of very many games, I should say. I will say that it is the most frustrating thing or an incredibly frustrating thing to deal with in Enlisted, but I think there are other problems with the game that cause more problems. Um, I don't like that they aren't looking to add restrictions. I understand not wanting to add restrictions, and I know that they tested the idea of like spawn points in the one of the April Fools events um, years ago, last year I think. Um, I would really like that. I think that is going to be the route that they are going to inevitably take because I think that's the best route to take. We'll see, um, but I still think that that's my opinion is still that that's the best thing to do. Uh, one of the recent events show that there's a demand for PVE content. Will you continue working in this direction? Uh, they said, we have a lot of fun developing the PvE. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Maintaining a PvE mode permanently would be challenging, not only due to implementation difficulties, but also we want to avoid having two games in one. Okay. I think that's fair. I think that's a really fair answer. Um, I wonder what they can do. That, that's, that's a fair answer. I think that's a tough answer. Um, I think it's a tough question. So, yeah, I don't know. Will there be option to separately purchase British and Italian soldiers of various classes? We're considering allowing players to change the voice, blah, blah, blah. They, yeah, we kind of talked about that above. Uh, will colorblind mode be in the game? We don't have colorblind mode yet? I thought we had colorblind mode. Eh. Okay. Um, basically, they said that, like, they already basically tried to do colorblind mode. Um, okay. I'm not colorblind, so I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll have to have my dad play. He's colorblind. Uh, we improve or rework the customization system. Oh, yeah, we already talked about this. Um, oh, for example, adding seasons. This approach isn't suitable for enlisted. Besides seasons, there's also a time period to consider. Um, yeah. They don't want to mess with, like, the the campaign things. Uh, we plan to analyze the current customization system and possibly adjust the order price relative to the amount that a player can realistically obtain. We plan to address this after we finish balancing the silver earnings. Ooh. Huh? Huh? We have more info on that. Um, yeah, they want to rework rider class. Talked about that. As you answered earlier, you decided to abandon the idea of veteran soldiers. Were there any plans for something similar in terms of concept mechanics? Uh, they had ideas to make a second layer of progression for soldiers, and they might return to that. Eh, I don't think it's needed. Um, if anything, soldiers should have less progression, I'll be honest with you guys. I think a lot of players kind of skip the perk system. Uh, are there plans to limit or nerf AP mines? Uh, we have plans to rebalance or change the mechanics at this stage. We're considering several options, such as... Okay, I'm going to play the role of the developer right here. They are saying they are considering several options, which means one, more, or none of these options may come. Don't crucify the devs over this. Uh, allowing engineers to find mines and disarm them. I like that. Reducing the blast radius of mines to make it harder to cover a large area. I don't like that. Lowering the durability of mines. Doesn't matter. Um... I guess that kind of matters. Uh, I, I like the first one the most. I like engineers being able to disarm them. I like adding a perk to the game that allows engineer, like a minesweeper perk that allows engineers to find mines. I'm not sure I would want it on the engineer class just because, I mean, it makes the most sense thematically, but engineers are already the best class and adding additional utility to a class that already has the most utility in the game seems unnecessary. Uh, maybe adding it to the anti-tank class and renaming the anti-tank class to just like explosives expert or some shit like that. I don't know, maybe. Or even like adding it to assaulters and like making assaulters like, oh, like you're a point man, right? You know, and you can like, you can have like a minesweeper as like assaulter. I don't know, something like that. Um, but I, I wouldn't mind it being on engineers. I think that's thematically fine. Uh, are there any plans to make a possible transfer accounts from console to PC? Um, yeah, that's super hard to do. I understand. I mean, I will say that like, th this is a thing where like this needed to be done beforehand. This needed to be done before enlisted was released years ago you can't do this now um or at least not without like a lot of difficulty which is what they're saying here um i will say that i think they should have done this initially i mean it's 2024 plenty of games have done this um but i i understand that like that wasn't originally within the scope of the project and it's hard to add that afterwards okay how will the new deserter penalty work this is good info it's a good q a uh, when leaving a battle early, players will incur a penalty on experience and silver earnings in subsequent battles. This penalty will not apply if the player this penalty won't apply if the player has spent enough time in the battle. Huh. What? 
The specific values of the penalty, the number of battles affected, and the duration of penalty are still being discussed. Is this a typo? You're saying that you can leave if you've been in the game for long enough? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Maybe I'm crazy, but shouldn't this be the other way around where if you... This penalty won't apply. It will not apply if they've spent enough time. Yeah, shouldn't it be the other way around? Like, if you leave quickly because... Like, like I, I'll be honest with you. Like, I leave games all the time assuming it's at the beginning of the game before anyone has spawned. Like, oh, I don't want to play this match. Like, I'm trying to make content for you guys. If I get a bad map or a match that I'm not trying to make for content, like, I leave that match. Right? And I'm just queuing normally. I don't really give a shit. But, like, you know, sometimes you don't want to play Conquest, and that's not a big deal in my opinion. I think that, that says more about the game mode than it does of the player. My problem is when people are quitting games after they've spawned in, and they're quitting because they think they're going to lose. Right? Like, that's when I think there's a problem. Uh, if you just don't want to play on a map or you don't want to play a certain game mode, I think that's a problem with the map and the game mode, not with the player, right? I mean, it could be an issue with the player, but like, that's not, I don't think that that's a problem is the bottom line there. So I find it weird. I feel like this is either a typo or this should be reversed. Like it should be, it won't apply if you haven't spent enough time in battle. Like you should be penalized for quitting halfway through the match, not within the first 30 seconds when you're going to get replaced by another person anyway. Okay, I don't know. I'd like some... I, I They said we'd like to clarify. Uh, I, I want more clarity on what this means, is what I'm going to say there. Uh, will there be any gameplay changes for players? There are currently too many explosions on the battlefield. I agree with that. Um, World War II had many explosions. Bombs, artillery, and a game of flex this. However, we're trying to ensure the infantry always reacts somehow to such things. Uh, we've already... We're already working on gray zones for... Um, what are these? Okay. I, I, um, so, I don't know. They're working on it. I guess. I mean, I, I don't agree with the explosion chain. I think that there are too many explosions in the game. I think the problem with the explosions is not necessarily that they exist. It's more that they are just too frequent. Um, and they are oftentimes very frustrating. Um, really, I think the big problem with explosions is um, right now, HVARs are the big things. Like, like rockets in general. But... I don't know. I don't think it's like that big of a deal. I'd say AP mines are the biggest problem with explosions. Will there be a filter search function for weapons in the storage? Yes, please, God. Um, yes, add it to the to-do list. Very good. Are you considering any improvements to premium squads? Um, yes, we've seen this request from players. Therefore, we're considering a possibility of giving all premium squads the usual slot for an additional specialist where possible. I mean, all right. I don't think that's necessary, but whatever. Uh... That's fine to add it. Like, I have a lot of premiums. I just don't think that's necessary. Like, I just don't care. Um, but I get it. Will anti-aircraft guns get an improved version for high BR like anti-tank guns? Hey, this is my question. I asked this, guys. Uh, for now, we hope to balance the infantry versus aircraft fights. Actually, someone in my Discord asked this, and then I asked it. Anyway. Um, so right now, they're trying to just do one set of anti-aircraft guns, but they will consider adding separate ones. Uh, and the roadmap didn't mention anything about custom maps or the mod editor. Are there any plans changed for them? New functionalities, improvements, or quality of life? And they want to keep adding stuff, but it's complex and it's yeah, they're 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 working on the core stuff, and that's a good that's that's a good take. Um, I like this Q and A. I don't think that they answered everything that I would have liked, but they never were going to, and that's okay. Um, I think they answered a lot of stuff. I think that the questions that they chose were good, a lot better than the last questions. I will say that. Um. And I think that they gave good answers. Like, I like this answer of like, hey, you mentioned this thing a long time ago. What happened to that? And they're like, we didn't forget. It's just a hard thing to do. And it's not a priority right now. And I think that's a good answer. Like, yeah, that's how game development works. Like sometimes, man, like it's like, look, this is a really cool thing that we want to do, but we need to fix this thing that's a lot more important right now, right? And sometimes stuff gets pushed back and sometimes stuff just gets scrapped because you just don't have the time. Right, that's that's game development, baby. That's all you can do. Um, so I like that. I like that it, this feels like they answered a lot of the good questions. Um, they did kind of give a little bit of wishy-washy answers to some of these, like the explosions one. I think is kind of like a like a little bit of a cop-out answer. But at the end of the day, um, I think it's fine. I think that they are they're they're listening. Um, I think they're showing that they're listening. Where was that question even at? Oh, there it is. Um, you know, they, you know, I, I don't think that saying like, oh, World War II had a lot of explosions and our game reflects this. It's like, well, okay, but it also sucks to play. So like, you know, um, but you know, they're like, hey, we hear you. 
and we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be working on it right so that's good i think that's what people really want to hear i think people just want more communication like this i really wish that we got this stuff more often rather than like once a year like it feels like um i would be so down to have like you don't have to do something as big as this because this is obviously huge right this is a lot of questions this is a lot of work for the devs um relatively speaking at least but like i would like to see like shorter versions of this maybe just like you know every like once a month like a monthly q a where you answer like five questions um, right. We have these forums. Now we have these things set up. We have this. So just answer five questions, right? You have major do it. Major can do it, right? Like he can, he can do it. He can talk to you guys. Um, let him do that kind of stuff. He's great at that kind of stuff. So yeah, I don't know. That's my thoughts. What do you guys think about this stuff? Leave me, uh, leave me a comment down below, get a conversation going. I'm sure the devs are going to be interested to, to hear your guys' feedback about the feedback about the feedback. So, uh, <laughs> um, right. Cause this is like feedback in response to your feedback. So um, give them feedback on that feedback. But uh, thanks again for watching, guys. Uh, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, yada, yada, yada. And I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.